In this video, I will show you how you can run .NET applications on macOS without a real Mac. In fact, we will not even use macOS. Instead, we will use Linux together with Darlink, which is a translation layer that enables you to run macOS applications on Linux without virtualization. Now, even though Darling is not perfect and it works basically only for command line applications, it should be enough to make the applications think that they are running on a real Mac OS. So in this video, I will show you how to set up .NET on Darling. We will run a .NET application and I will give you my opinion about it. But before we start, welcome to the channel. Here you can find topics about Linux, Docker, game dev or software development in general or short agile dev art. If you like that kind of content, then give a like, subscribe and smash the bell icon to get notified when I release new videos. All the links from this video are down in the description and also down there on the timestamps, so you can skip any part if you want. I'm now here on PeerOS, which is an Ubuntu-based distro. Let's open the terminal. Here it is, and let's run NeoFetch. As you can see, this is Linux, PeerOS, Thick Sur, with the kernel 6.5. It is an older PeerOS release, but it should do. The interesting thing is that this one is actually running from a USB drive. In a previous video, I showed you how you can install a macOS lookalike named PeerOS on a USB drive. So if you want to run a macOS-like Linux distro from a USB drive yourself, then you can check out the link to the video up there or down in the description. Now here on PeerOS, we will use Darlink, which is, as I mentioned, a compatibility layer for macOS applications on Linux. Now to run this one, you need to open the terminal and write Darlink shell. It is already installed on my machine and I'm now inside the Darlink shell. Let's run the NeoFetch script here using bash. So NeoFetch thinks that it is running on Mac OS Big Sur 11.7 but it's actually running inside the Darlink environment. Now in this video, I will assume that you already installed Darlink on your machine, but in case you didn't, in a previous video, I showed you how you can build and install Darlink on Linux from scratch. So if you want to install and run macOS applications on Linux yourself, then you can check out the link to the video up there or down in the description. Now, if NeoFetch thinks that it is running on macOS, then .NET applications should do this as well. First, we need to install .NET on Darlink. So let's download .NET, install .NET on macOS, and down here, we can see a table of currently supported .NET releases on macOS. Previously, we saw that Darlink is actually emulating Big Sur. And on Big Sur, only .NET 6 is supported. So let's download .NET 6, download .NET, .NET 6, and here we want the latest SDK and macOS x64. Now let's wait for the download. Download complete, and here it is. Now let's install this one on Darlink. Let's close that, and let's clear the terminal. I'm still inside the Darlink shell, and I'm inside my Linux home folder, which is on Darlink, mounted under slash volumes slash system root. Now let's go inside downloads. Here is my .NET SDK. And now to install a PKG file, just write installer dash PKG, the PKG package name, dash target and a slash. Let's install, enter. This can take a bit. Perfect. .NET is installed. Let's try it out. By default, it should be installed under user local share .NET is the executable. So let's try it out. Dash dash version. It works. This is the macOS .NET version 6 running on Darlink. All right, .NET is installed. Now let's see the .NET application. I have prepared a very simple .NET server application. This one uses ASP.NET, which is something that you normally use when you write server applications. It runs perfectly on Linux, so let's try it out on Linux first. Open the console, 
I have already installed .NET on Linux. Let's check the installed version. It's the version 6. Now let's build the .NET project. I'm already inside the right folder. Write.NET build-c release. Enter build. Build succeeded. No warnings and no errors. Now let's run the server application. .NET and the path to the server .NET DLL. Let's run it. Application is running and it is listening on localhost. So let's open the browser, press control and click on the URL. And here it is. We get a website that contains just a simple table with random names, IDs and avatar images. The server application gets the data from a random API on the internet. The data is randomly generated and just displayed here as a table. So there is really nothing special about it. There is also a second endpoint, about. And here we get information about the server, like where the application is located, the running .NET framework, which is version 6, the platform, which is Unix kernel 6.5, this is the Linux kernel that I'm using and a simple message from the random API. This is just plain text. So again, nothing special here. We can get the same text also inside the console. Let's close Firefox, stop the server, control C, and let's run it again, this time with the about option. And here is the same text. All right. As we saw, it works on Linux. Now let's try it out on Darlink. Clear the terminal and let's run the Darling shell. And now let's run the .NET application, the path to .NET on Darling and the path to server DLL and run. And we get an error. The connection listener failed to accept any new connections. And down here it says listening on a local host. But if I try to open the site, it just loads and that's all. So it doesn't work. Stop the application. At the time of recording, unfortunately, ASP.NET doesn't work on Darling. Let's try to get the about text, dash dash about. This one also got stuck. Simple stuff like writing to the console should basically work, but this one also gets data from the random API, the random message. Unfortunately, it gets stuck by handling the HTTPS request to the API. Let's stop it, control C. So it looks like that ASP.NET doesn't work and also HTTPS requests don't work. I tried to work around that and I created a second server application without ASP.NET. I will clear the terminal. I called this one server light. And here I also added an option to display the about text without the message from the API. So let's try this out. So this is the server light DLL and the option is called about no message. Let's try it out. So this one just writes out to the console and nothing else. The about text is the same. We get the path to the DLL. The used.NET framework is version six. This is the one that we previously installed on Darling and the platform is Unix 11.7, which is not Linux, but Darling. So the .NET application thinks that it is running on Mac OS version 11.7, which is Big Sur. So this is nice, but writing to the console isn't really that special. We still want to run a server application. We are not using ASP.NET anymore, so this problem is solved but we still have a problem with the HTTPS requests to the random API. The random API is on the internet and it only supports HTTPS and no HTTP. Since we cannot change the API, we need to find a way to convert HTTPS to HTTP so that our server application can access it. And there is a way how we can do this locally. I will clear the terminal and open a new tab. The command that we will use is called ncat, which is a Linux network utility that does a lot of stuff. It can listen on one port, get the data and send it to a different port. Or it can just write data back to the same port. And that's exactly the use case that we need. I will copy the full command from my cheat sheet. So this is the full command line. 
Without going too much into detail, I will just briefly explain what this one does. So NCAT will listen on port 8080 on localhost. This is the port where the server application will expect to find the API and it will send requests to it. NCAT will then get the request, send it to the set command, which will then extract the endpoint from the HTTP get command and pipe the result to the curl command, which will do an HTTPS request to the random API with the given endpoint. Curl will handle the HTTPS request, get the response, send everything back to NCAT, and then NCAT will send everything back to the server application. With this, the server application can send a plain text HTTP request to localhost 8080, and then NCAT together with curl will handle the HTTPS request and send back the plain text response to the server application. Let's see if it works. Run. We can see that NCAT is listening on port 8080. I will move this window out just so we can see what's happening. Now let's start the server. This time we are running the server light and we need to specify the API endpoint, which is on HTTP localhost 8080, where NCAT is listening. And let's try it out. Enter. Perfect, the server is listening. Let's open the website. Let's see. Perfect, now we get the web page. On the right hand side, we can also see the request that was sent to the random API. And here we have the response, a table with random names, IDs and avatar images. Let's see the about page, about, and here it is. On the right hand side, we can see the request that was sent to the random API. And the result is this simple message. Also what we can see, the application thinks again that it is running on Mac OS. And that's what we want. Now with this, we saw that many things still don't work on Darling. ASP.NET doesn't work. HTTPS requests doesn't work. For the server application, I had to use the low-level TCP listener and handle HTTP manually like it's 1999. Also, the requests to the random API are handled synchronously, which is not so great, but it is the only thing that worked. But still, getting a .NET server application running on Darling is actually cool. If you like my videos and also want to support me, I also have a Patreon page. I really appreciate all the support I get and it's because of your support that I can make videos like this one. So thank you very much and the link to Patreon is up there or down in the description. This server application is actually a rewrite of a GTK application that I used in a previous video. In a previous video, I showed you how you can develop cross-platform GTK applications using C-sharp.net. And it's the same one that we used in this video, just with a GTK GUI. So if you want to write cross-platform GTK applications yourself, then you can check out the link to the video up there or down in the description. And that's all for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, then like and subscribe. And if you really like the video, down there is a super thanks. So you can buy me a coffee, for instance, so I can make more of those awesome videos. Thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.